Hey there, and welcome to ProFlows Plus. I'm Cameron, and this is part two of our more advanced lesson for title. Okay, so one thing looking at this, a couple things I immediately see is, uh, number one, I want this to be white. I don't want it to be this kind of yellowish white. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my title light, hit AA, and I'm gonna change the color here to 100% white. That looks a little bit better. I also definitely do not want to see this background texture here um, once we get to this point. So I think that's just me saying, except lights on, it's gone. And we just need to make sure at some point we can see it, which we can't really see it. And I don't know if that's because I'm gonna go ahead and scale it back down to 100% here. I also want it to be closer to our guy here. Cause I want it to really highlight him. So maybe somewhere in here, but it's interesting because I can't really see it. Um, uh, maybe Let's open this back up, except lights on, except shadows. Just to make sure, let's just turn that off. Okay, yeah, there's no shadows. Cast shadows, ambience up there. Maybe Sometimes playing around with these, like turning diffuse all the way up is definitely doing something here. Uh, specular metal, maybe sometimes turning it down. But I don't like that. So I'm not sure what that is. So let's bring it a little bit further. So when it's back here behind the guy, you can definitely see it. It's hitting a light there, but I don't like that at all. So it looks like I think we need to add a light. And we'll call this a point light as well. We'll make it white. And this will be the subtle dust light. And we don't need to cast shadows again. So that definitely brought some light into it. Let's take it up here. And I don't want it to affect that the guy, the man. Let's turn the brightness of it down. And let's go ahead and scale up back up there. So I'm just looking at the edges here. I just want to make sure I'm not, I just don't want to see the edges here. And I also want it to fade out again. Like once we get to this point, I want it to be gone. So to do that, we're just going to keyframe the intensity. So here it's 25%, but by the time it hits here, it's down to zero. Maybe it's negative 10. Yeah, so it's just a very subtle effect, but it works, right? Okay, so something else I want to do is I want to bring in a little bit more texture here. And I to do that, it's going to be real simple. We're just going to drop in an entire layer here. So we're going to bring in old design right there. Boom. And let's just copy these three effects. Put it on here. And there we go. And we'll set it to screen. And we'll make it three dimensional. So it sees some of those lights there. Nice. And we're gonna bring it forward. Maybe somewhere right in here. And bring it down. 
Oh, somewhere maybe in there. Yeah, so that just gives it a lot more atmosphere there. And I want to make sure at this point that we're not seeing it. So we are seeing a little bit of it there. So maybe if I push it back. I really like the position there. So let's just make sure. Where was our negative light? Where was that at? Oh, negative light. So negative 48, so maybe if I go even more. It's interesting, if you go really negative, you can start seeing these come back as a negative value is black. I don't want that. Yeah, so negative light's not gonna work for that one. So maybe for this guy, we just do a little bit of a cheat here. So we have 100% opacity, and then we just drop that opacity down to zero. Or not, I guess, yeah, okay, that is it right there. But we're still seeing something else right in there, which I believe looks to me like another texture layer. So what is that? It's not that. So it's none of those three. Maybe it's one of this. That's that one right there. So again, maybe for this guy, we'll do the same thing. We'll have 100% opacity and then just drop them to zero. I just want it to be, you know, just the focus is on the title. Sometimes it's okay if there's a little bit of texture there, but uh, I just want that title to really come through. So that's looking pretty nice. This line of text right here is bugging me. Let's move it up, because I, I just want to see, I don't want it to cover the guys. Yeah, it just bugs me how it covers him up right there. Maybe just a hair more. So you remember that we started with him completely uh, black everything was black to start with so we do need to adjust some of the the lights here something that we added is really bringing some light so there there's one of them so if we maybe have this one start at zero what else we got going on here we have another could be our texture here that's adding a little bit let's turn these lights off those are adding a little bit as well. So we'll hit AA and we'll set their intensities to the zero as well. I could also just add you know, like a black solid here to fade everything in, um, which maybe I will actually do that, but I'll make it very quick. So we'll, I like to call it fade in. I'll put it at the top of the layer stack here. Hit T for transparency. And by a second in, I want it to be gone. Option in bracket to set the out point and I'll lock this layer so I don't mess with it there. Yeah, now the only thing that's bogging me now is that this guy is out of focus and he should, you know, really be in focus right at this point. So let's look at that. Our focus distance is 620 at the end. So a lot of times what I'll do, like what you just saw me do there is I set, and I do this all the time with like lights and things like that. If I like a setting of where it's at, but I know I'm going to adjust and add some other keyframes, I'll just immediately set a keyframe and then I'll just drag that key from out wherever. So it's out there. I know that I want to get to that point eventually, which is why it's there. So that's what I just did there. And let's just set a focus distance here. So the guy is right here and our camera is way back here. So, you know, something else we can look at is if I hit shift P, maybe we just need to bring the camera closer. And there's more of a move here. You know, something like maybe this. Uh, 
That's not too bad. Let's go bring the focus distance in. And we'll do an ease into this. So I want to get this stuff out of focus pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. So now let's add some a few things here to kind of really, you know, finish this off. Oh, actually, you know what I forgot is to add this air particles windy footage here. This stuff's pretty cool. You can see it's just some air particles kind of flying through space here. And I just want to see them in the middle here somewhere. And this is also 4K footage, so it's huge. Let's go back to two views, make sure we've got some lights hitting this. So I can see a little bit right. Oh, I did. Hit AA, I'm going to turn the diffuse up to 100%. Yeah, I'm just not seeing this one at all. There, it starts to come in. So I want to see it just before we see that type come in. And I've lost it. I had it there for a second. Tell you what, when you work with a lot of lights like this, it's easy to lose track of what, what you can see and what you can't see here. Shoot. There's our dust right there. You can see a little speck that comes through right here. You know, and that might be kind of interesting to see some of this dust here at the end with the title. Yeah, so maybe we'll try that. Let's um, add just a few things here to finish this off. That's going to be a new adjustment layer and we'll call that effects. We'll bring it below the fade in. And for this, I want to add some grain. I want this to have a, like a nice organic feel to it. And that's going to require some grain. So let's add some grain. Set that to final output. Let's go back to one view. And let's set the preset to the second one. I found that this was pretty nice. Very subtle, but it's nice. Let's also add a chromatic aberration, which, you know, it's very huge right now. It's very trendy. Um, like I said, you can add, plug in everything, quick chromatic aberration, it's a free plugin. I'm gonna actually use uh, Red Giant Universe. We're gonna switch it up this time and we're gonna go into, um, actually under distort chromatic aberration. This is one I've used very little of. I typically will use Sapphire. 
But uh, let's go with this for this project. You can see I brought it above below add grain. So I want grain to be the final kind of effect on, on top of everything. I want it to be on top of that chromatic aberration. So you don't want to have grain and then chromatic aberration on top of that. I mean, I guess you could, but for me, I want that grain to be on the tops. So I like how this is really distorting on the edge here. I don't want it to be too heavy. I think simple or simple smudges is where I'm gonna go here. Yeah, I think simple smudges will work for me. It's looking pretty good. I like how it kind of gives that edge, that blurry edge to it. It's looking pretty nice. Um, and I also want to add, I think just a little bit of flicker here. And to add a little bit of flicker, let's actually go to a new solid, make it slightly off white here, a little bit on the orange side, and we'll call this flicker. And we're going to set the transparency really low here, like 2%. We're going to hit Alter Option, click, wiggle. And let's just do a low value two and three and see what that looks like. Actually, let's do six and three. Six and three is what I found. Worked pretty well for my test. I'm gonna save this. Okay, so let's take a look at this. It's looking pretty dope, which is my favorite word. Um, I like it. There's always things I'm gonna adjust. The one thing I don't, two things I don't love. I don't love this dust that's kind of flying, the windy dust here. I'm gonna go ahead and include it in the project file. For my final version, I'm gonna turn it off. Uh, something else I wanna do is I want to actually bring the effects above the flicker. So the flicker was very subtle there. Um, I could actually even turn up the transparency, maybe just a hair more. Um, and then on the effects, I'm actually gonna turn this master distortion way down Yeah, something like that, point 0.1. Uh, you saw that it was default. Even at simple, uh, distortion was default to a master distortion of one, and I'm just turning that down to point 0.1. And I think that's gonna do it for me. I do see a little bit of a, a black edge here, which I don't absolutely love. I don't know if that's, yeah, that's the chalkboard. So I'm gonna scale that up. Just go to 200%, there we go. So that's gonna fill in the frame. And obviously this could be any title. I think it might be, uh, that might look good. You could always add additional effects, things like that. Uh, you know, something I might do is, um, I don't love the kind of yellowish light that's going on a lot here. I, I think it's a little bit stronger um, as a white light. So I would just bring it a little bit more in that area. I'm just hitting AA. You know, it's just subtle. So those two are, are good. The ambient fill I never used. Negative light I didn't use. Probably I am using, but the color doesn't matter on that one. Man spotlight. I'm going to bring that one a little bit more in the white range there. That looks good. And... The flicker, I'm actually going to also bring it more in the white range right there. And with that, I'm gonna turn off my air particles, set this to render, and I'm gonna call this one good. Uh, as always, let me see what you create. You know, this project file is there for you to work off of, but I love it when you uh, take this and you make it your own, right? Don't just take the project file and replace some text or replace an image or replace the final title. You know, make it your own. Take what you've learned here and change some things up and just make it make it your own piece and put that out on social media, on Instagram, hashtag it ProFlows Plus, tag Motion Science, and let me see what you create. And that's gonna wrap up uh, this lesson on advanced 
3D lights and shadows.